I am Dr. Manish Shaw, a pediatric emergency medicine physician, EMS researcher, and Houston site principal investigator for the Charlotte, Houston, and Milwaukee pre-hospital research node of the Pediatric Emergency Care Applied Research Network. I'm excited to share the findings from a study that we published from data from the CHAMP node of PCARN entitled Multicenter Evaluation of Pre-Hospital Seizure Management in Children. This project was supported by the Health Resources and Services Administration through two consecutive grants that supported the CHAMP node. By the end of this module, people should be able to compare management of pediatric pre-hospital seizures in several EMS systems, determine the impact of protocol changes on EMS practice after implementing best evidence, and understand opportunities for improvement in the management of pediatric pre-hospital seizures. Seizures are one of the most common reasons for calling an ambulance for a child, and stopping the seizure quickly is essential to avoid brain damage, respiratory failure, and death. Timely delivery of the right dose of a benzodiazepine using an ideal route is essential to treat pediatric seizures effectively and safely in the pre-hospital setting. Because EMS is protocol-based, implementing evidence-based protocols is one way to enhance the quality of pre-hospital care. In 2014, the first pre-hospital evidence-based guidelines using the nationally endorsed pre-hospital evidence-based guideline model process were published, and pediatric seizures was the focus of one of these. Shown here is a summary of the main recommendations made in that guideline. Of these, the two most important recommendations are highlighted. Not placing an intravenous or intraosseous line initially, since that delays medication administration, and using a non-IV route, such as intramuscular or intranasal, as first-line therapy for the first dose of benzodiazepine. Of note, the type of benzodiazepine to use is not specified in the guideline, and how this is implemented may vary locally based on availability of medications. However, midazolam is a commonly used benzodiazepine that can be given either intranasal or intramuscular. Despite having published guidelines since 2014, the relative infrequency of pediatric EMS cases compared to adults contributes to variability in managing pediatric emergencies. Also, just because a protocol has changed does not necessarily mean that practice will change. Therefore, the purpose of this study was to compare management of pediatric pre-hospital seizures across three EMS systems in Charlotte, Houston, and Milwaukee, and to determine if significant changes in practice occurred after these systems protocols were revised to be consistent with the best available evidence. Using a retrospective cross-sectional design, we evaluated pediatric patients with active pre-hospital seizures in three different EMS affiliates in the CHAMP node of PCARN over a two-year period in each EMS system. These systems were the City of Houston Fire Department EMS in Houston, Texas, Milwaukee County EMS in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and Mecklenburg EMS in Charlotte, North Carolina. With respect to the main recommendations, the protocols varied before and after implementation. The main modifications focused on dose and route optimization. Noted here is how each EMS agency changed their seizure protocol with respect to midazolam dose and route. At all sites, the intramuscular and intranasal dose was modified in some way. For the study, we included participating EMS agency transports for patients less than 18 years old with a pre-hospital chief complaint or a working assessment of seizure, febrile seizure, or convulsions who were either actively seizing upon EMS arrival or were seizing at any point during EMS care. We only included patients EMS transported to one of the affiliated children's hospitals in the CHAMP network. We excluded patients BLS professionals transported since the majority of protocol-based seizure management is only in the scope of practice of ALS professionals. In 533 actively seizing children across these three sites, we found several improvements, including a 27% absolute increase in the use of the preferred intramuscular and intranasal routes after changing the protocol. Also, there was a 10% absolute increase in the administration of midazolam to actively seizing children. However, there was room for improvement since nearly one half of the patients still received the wrong dose of midazolam based on what the protocol at that time stated was the correct dose.
We also found no change in several other outcomes, such that seizure activity upon emergency department arrival was fairly common, occurring in one-third of patients before and after protocol change. One of the likely reasons why patients are still having a seizure on emergency department arrival is that many of them are being underdosed. As noted before, dosing errors occurred in one half of the patients, 75% of whom were underdosed. Another reason why seizures may not be stopping prior to emergency department arrival is that there are delays in midazolam administration, such that the average time to benzodiazepine administration after arrival to the scene is 14 minutes. Human factors related to the ease of medication dosing may also play a role in this variability in practice. Of the 71% of patients in whom EMS measured blood glucose, only 4 out of 378, or 1%, were hypoglycemic. For the entire study period, 1 out of 6 patients had respiratory failure during pre-hospital or emergency department care, defined as having received bag mass ventilation, supraglottic airway placement, or endotracheal intubation. So, the problem with pediatric pre-hospital seizure management is one-third of these children still arrived at the emergency department with ongoing seizures, one-half of them received an incorrect dose of midazolam, usually underdosed, and glucose checks have historically been prioritized, though hypoglycemia is rare. And the need to improve outcomes is to optimize midazolam dosing and simplify administration so children stop seizing and keep breathing. So what does this mean for your community? Aligning EMS protocols with the best evidence improves use of preferred intramuscular and intranasal routes and receipt of midazolam. Doses need optimization, possibly by standardizing them, and since hypoglycemia is rare, glucose checks should be deferred until after the first dose of midazolam is administered.